Okay, um, I had a little script typed up, but I lost it three times, so I'm just going to go by what I remember from it. <laughs> um, I guess the biggest thing for me that I ended up getting out of the story of Frankenstein, and I guess most of the things we've done over the past semester in general, is just um, how big of a difference it makes whether one considers the consequences of their actions before they commit them and it's, it sounds super general but um, if you apply it to Frankenstein for instance um, when he creates the monster it's like due to this uh, obsessive desire he has to create life anew like he wants to play God and he wants to create life as a result of a lot of his childhood experiences which is the same motivation that a lot of people uh, experience throughout their life so it makes sense to me but in his like furious attempt to do so um, he tends to kind of go through like an any means necessary kind of way about, of going about it and as a result um, he's like kind of pulling at straws and then um, the monster he creates he doesn't really know what to do with and what's more he's afraid of it because I don't know it's something completely un like unknown to him and he just doesn't understand it and people are naturally afraid of what they don't know um so in a way I kind of relate it to like the way I used to uh, play video games when I was a kid um most people's parents kind of discouraged it at least it seemed that way from most of the people in my class but uh, my dad actually really pushed for me to play he said that it would help me uh, develop my problem-solving skills. To this day, I think he still attributes my ability to do so to the fact that he had me play this Casper the Friendly Ghost game when I was like six or seven. Um, it was really hard, by the way, if you ever try it. It's on PlayStation. Um, but um, essentially, the way I would go about that is kind of in the same way that uh, Frankenstein goes about his monster. Like, I just wanted to solve the puzzle and move on to the next portion of the game. I wouldn't consider like what's going to happen once I finish this part, What could? what's going to come next, what do I have to do? It was basically, shoot, I can't get this level to work, how can I uh, figure it out, you know, and I have to, do I have to cheat, do I have to do whatever it takes, you know? It was sort of a by any means necessary kind of thing. Um, however, what I like is that now they have games that um, adapt to the way that you play them, which I think is so cool. Because um, it's not just about how you solve the problem, it's about um, the way in which you go about solving it. So um, depending on how you treat the game, the, tre the game treats you accordingly, which I think is incredible. And through having that um, new ability to understand you and to force you to think ahead in terms of what's going to happen next, um, you can kind of avoid the same situation with uh, Victor Frankenstein in which you're put in a situation that you have no idea how to handle um, and I think it's a valuable skill that most people need to adapt in order to be able to progress I guess as a society um, it's really important for science and for everything so kudos
the satellite. Atlantis, uh, are you ready for a phone conference? Over. Roger, Alvin. Uh, this is the Atlantis. Uh, go ahead with your question. How specifically do the creatures adapt to the high temperatures around the vent to survive? Over. What is their origin? Over.
sozinho 